Welcome back, everyone. I'm the Bad Luck Gamer, and today we're going to be talking about a very interesting archetype that's not like many others. And I'm not talking about one that has like the class archetypes or anything like that. This one, amongst just the standard archetypes, is a classic favorite from first edition, and not only that, but works. A little bit differently than other standard archetypes out there and before we're doing that uh, it may not appear as much but at the time or at the time that this video will be coming out I'll be in Norway so if I don't reply to any of your comments or anything like that I highly apologize it's just you know gonna be gone for a week not gonna always have access to the internet and you know gonna be on vacation what can I say so hopefully the amount of content that comes out is enough to keep you all satiated until I come back sometime next week. Uh, that does mean that there won't be any table talk this week, as well as, you know, obviously we won't be doing as much on the Discord. But speaking of the Discord and the like, if you like this video, please like it. And if you want to see more, subscribe so you have a higher chance of seeing these coming up on your feed. Not only that, but we have a Discord down below, as aforementioned. And we talk all things tabletop, including Warhammer 40k. And I always recruit there first for any of my games. So if you want the chance to play with me and my friends, you can check us out there. Not only that, but if you want something that's a little less committal, you can go to the Twitter and follow me there. Where, you know, I always talk about whatever's coming up on the channel. Including things like giveaways, which we'll probably have another one here sometime next month so be on the lookout for that i'm very excited to do another giveaway so got a tons of swag to give out um, but with that let's go ahead and get to the video and we're today we're going to be talking about the cavalier now the cavalier if you're unaware is a, a knightly individual that often uses lances is mounted is proficient in mounted combat that kind of stuff. This is an archetype that used to be a prestige class in Pathfinder First Edition. So a lot of people have been keeping their eye on this one, and I don't think it really disappoints. Not only that, but Knights of Nas the Light no. Knights of Last Wall, there we go, introduced a few new extra feats to increase the knightliness of the Cavalier. But we'll get to that. Let's go ahead and look at the dedication itself. So the Cavalier dedication only requires that you're trained in nature and society. Pretty easy. This all this is also one you can pick up at level two, which you know most characters should be able to if they want to pick up the Cavalier. And what the actual dedication itself does is it gives you an animal companion that must have the mounted special traits. And if you're a small race for whatever instance, and you're a mounted creature like a battle dog or anything like that starts off small it actually starts off as medium instead for the purpose of use with mounted abilities what really makes the cavalier stand out though is that the cavalier can dedicate itself to an order or organization and when it does so it further you know has to follow the edicts or the anathema or well i guess has to it is is subject to the anathema there we go of whatever order if you're a part of a druidic order then you have to follow their anathema if, and if you break it then you know obviously you lose access to your cavalier abilities as well but what makes it really good is if you're attached to another organization which there are feet feet or sorry there are archetypes after like the hell knights for instance you do not have to wait the standard you know, two extra feats before you can pick up other archetype dedication feats. You can actually go directly from the dedication feat for Cavalier straight into Hell Knight as long as you're a Hell Knight and you're following their orders. Now, if you break any of your order or you go against your organization in whatever form, sorry, it's it's kind of a complex thing to talk about, but more or less, if you go against your order, you lose your Cavalier abilities. The whole point of the Cavalier is that they're a part of an organization, they're a representative of that organization, and they hold themselves to the standards of that order or organization. Making a Cavalier Hell Knight a really cool idea. And you'll see as we go through some of the feats in the list, this is really good for augmenting your play style based on more or less what you kind of want to do. The biggest thing is you get an animal companion 
and you get in it is mounted. That's it. So let's go ahead and see what the next beats are. Cavalier's banner is designed around the whole idea of forming a pledge or making a, not a pact per se, but joining an organization officially, I, I guess. Because what it is, is you fly a banner overhead and all allies within 30 feet get a plus one to will saves and saves against fear effects, whatever they may be. They're always will usually, so it's kind of a given, but whatever that may be, you get the benefit when you're waving the flag of your organization. And if this banner gets destroyed or whatever, everyone who's getting the benefit of it become frightened one. So it's very important that you maintain this. It's not anything I think you have to worry about as a player specifically. It's the banner itself is just something that's representative of your organization. You don't have to necessarily be holding it or to be waving it around you don't have to dedicate a hand to it it's just from your mount you wave your flag and i think this is just like an action right no it's not even an action yeah as long as you're bearing essentially the the assign a banner a heraldry or whatever of your organization your allies get a benefit that's really good no action dedication nothing that's a very solid ability overall Cavalier's Charge is actually kind of cool. So what it does is it's two actions, your mount strides, and during that stride, you can make a strike. And, oh, your mount strides twice, even better. So your mount strides twice, which, by the way, they're more than nothing going to have a pretty decent movement speed. You're going to be making tracks. You're going to be burning the trail with this one. And as you're flying by at any point during those strides, you can make a strike with a melee weapon or within the first range increment if you're using a range a range weapon of some kind. And not only that, but you get a plus one circumstance bonus to this strike. This is immensely helpful. This is really, really good. And as long as you got the ability to move, this is a very solid choice of action. It's got really no downsides other than the fact that if you don't want to spend two actions to strike with the plus one circumstance bonus, which is fair, I guess, but this comes with mobility. Not only that, but you do not have to end your movement next to the opponent to make the strike. You can use this for hit and runs. You can do this for, you know, drive bys in a sense. You come by, slash them, keep going. This can make you a nuisance on the battlefield. And if an enemy's trying to keep up, like if an enemy's on foot, you're going to be outplaying them as they're just not going to be able to catch up. They're going to have to use one, maybe even two actions to move up to you to even try to strike you or your mounts. This is a very powerful action if you have the ability to maneuver in this way. Impressive mount is the Cavalier's feat for making your mount a mature animal companion. That's it. That's really all it does. If you don't know, mature animal companions get the ability. They get stat boosts, obviously. I, get, I think they get a skill increase as well. And not only that, but they get the ability to make a strike or stride if you do not command them in the turn, which does mean that you kind of get an extra stride action during your turn because your animal companion is a mount. It's very interesting. And if I'm not correct, yeah, stride or strike. So yeah, you can technically move once per turn for free thanks to this feat. It, it's a really good one, especially with the Cavalier. Quick mount is an amazing action because for whatever reason, you're more than likely not riding your mount at all times. This is the way to quickly mount your mount, I guess. That's a redundant phrase, but you know what I mean. You mount your mount and you command your animal companion with the same action. It's an amazing action because it saves you a bunch of action economy. You essentially lose nothing and can mount your mount essentially for free. It's a really good action overall for your action economy, and it makes the Cavalier very easy to get up and on their mount, which can be something that can be tedious at times, especially because mounting your mount, I, I hate saying that, but that's the only way to really properly say it. Mounting your animal companion, there you go, is an action normally. So this is an amazing action if you plan on using your mounted animal companion frequently in combat. Defend mount is an excellent action reaction that you can pick up especially if you're not a fighter or are worried about your reactions but even if you are your mount is very important especially for the utility for a lot of your feats that you get through cavalier what this reaction does is if an enemy is striking your mount and you're currently mounted on your animal companion you can use your reaction to take the strike it 
the strike comes against your AC, and if they succeed, you take the effects of the strike rather than your animal companion. This lets you divvy out the damage between you and your animal companion, and is overall pretty solid. Though I will say animal companions do get a pretty hefty health pool so this is not one i would think you would use all too frequently but this can prevent you from taking a really serious blow especially if is it before the attack is made yeah no so if it's a critical that might topple your mount for instance you might want to take it just because it's either you and your animal companion go prone or you go prone that's a very big one. And not only that, but there's a wide variety of other effects that you might not want your mount to take. So this is a very solid one. And it doesn't even say, it's just an attack roll against your mount while you're riding it. It doesn't even have to be adjacent. It doesn't have to be anything. You could take a spell strike or a spell attack for your mount as well. This is something that's very important and might help you. If your mount gets hit with a ray of frost, for instance, your mount loses speed. But if you get hit by a ray of frost, you don't lose speed because you're not the one moving on your turns. It's your mount, so something that's very important to mention. Mounted Shield is another good synergistic effect with your mounts, especially when you raise shield, your mount gets a bonus to its AC as well. And if you have shield block, you can shield block for your mount instead of for yourself. This is very solid for protecting your mount, but honestly, even giving your mount a boost to AC is solid. And that's just whenever you raise your shield. There's not even an extra action or nothing. There's really no reason not to take this one if you plan on using a shield just because it makes your mount even harder to hit, which is pretty good. Incredible mounts makes your animal either nimble or savage. Your animal companion either nimble or savage. Just an upgrade to the animal companion. Important, but not really much to see here. All right, next is Stalwart Standard, and I got pulled up here, so I apologize if my face is a little uh, flushed out, but I want to make sure, there's a lot here, and I want to make sure I get it correct. So, Stalwart Standard is a, another feat that kind of goes along the Cavalier's Banner feat line. You also must be a Knight Vigilant from the Knights of Last Wall, so that's something important as well, but it is argued that you could probably do this for any organization if your DM allows you know, this is something that's specific for the Night Vigilant. It's up to you and your group how that works out. But let's let's tell you what this is. So any allies that are benefiting from the your banner also get a circumstance bonus of plus one to their fortitude and reflex DCs against disarm, grapple, shove, and trip. Each benefited ally also gains a plus one status bonus to attack rolls against creatures that has dealt damage to an innocent of a lower level than that ally within the last round, not including summon creatures, companions, or any creatures you or allies have put in danger on purpose in an attempt to gain the benefit of this feat. So yeah, it's a, it's an interesting one. Now, I don't know if, say, like the Hell Knights are all too interested in defending the, the citizenry, as it were, or the innocents. So this is a very strange one in consideration to that. But this is a good one overall, not only that, but this even further benefits your allies. They essentially get a plus one circumstance bonus to all saving throws. Well, I guess only to, at least for fortune and, and reflex, only against disarm, grapple, shove, and trip, to be fair. But that's still a pretty wide coverage overall. And they get a plus one status bonus to attack rolls against creatures that have dealt damage to an innocent of a lower level than your party. If your group comes up on a town that's being attacked, well, that orc that just chopped down that guard is going to get run through by your party. Because that status bonus is pretty good and it doesn't even say, yeah, it's just all attack rolls. So as long as y'all witness it, your team for the rest of that fight is going to get a bonus to their attack rolls and it's a status bonus which is pretty good this is a very solid one if a little niche in its use uh but i absolutely love these banner feats they make the cavalier feel like the center of the battlefield in a lot of ways and you give your allies a bunch of benefits and you're your own threat to be dealt with especially with how powerful animal companions can be in pathfinder 2e so sword standard is a very good feat overall Trampling Charge, another little bit of a longer one, so I got this one pulled up as well. It's a three-action flourish, 
And essentially what it does is if you're riding a mount that has a melee strike that uses its claws, like a hoof attack or a talon for whatever reason, uh, you command your animal companion to strike and, or strike, to stride or burrow, climb, fly if applicable or swim. And it moves through the spaces of any foes in your path that are one size smaller than your mount. One size or smaller, I should say. Then your mount deals damage equal to the melee strike using its legs to each creature whose space you move through. Then you need to make a basic reflex saving throw against your mount's athletics DC. And on a crit failure, they become flat-footed until the end of your next turn. You, you can damage a given creature only once during this movement, so you can't circle around an enemy and trample them over and over. Though I think that would be kind of funny, honestly. But this is a really good feat overall. You only get one stride out of it, which I think is not great for a three-action move, but you can technically strike as many enemies as you can move through, and your mounts can move really, really fast. So, it's essentially what it is, is it's a basic reflex saving throw strike against as many enemies as your mount can move through this can be really good i would say overall the action's not great but what the biggest benefit is is normally you can't move through enemy squares even if you're mounted on a creature that's larger than them what this allows you to do is move through their squares much more easily and do damage to them this is great for repositioning this is great if you're running down a corridor filled with enemies you can just plow right through them which i think is awesome really the cavalier really does not disappoint when it comes to mounted combat and this is really good it, it being a basic reflex saving throw is also kind of i wish they allow you to strike twice if they allowed you to strike twice, I feel like this action would be much more beneficial. But I can also see how that would be strong because striding twice, for some mounts, that's 80 feet. You could hit every enemy on the battlefield with a strike, which would be very powerful. Every round, no, no less. So I understand why it is the way it is. But because of that, I think this is a slightly inefficient action for the action, you know, cost. So it's up to you. I like this one just for the sake of it allows you to move through enemy squares more easily and allows you to reposition and damage enemies at the same time. But all really good things. Unseat shows the Cavalier's dominance when it comes to jousting combat. If you're wielding a jousting weapon, which is typically like a jousting lance or something like that, you're able to uh, use this action to strike them. And if your strike hits, you can make an athletics check against their fortitude DC. And if you succeed, they are knocked into an adjacent square next to their mount. If you crit succeed, they fall prone, which can be potentially really good. Now, whether this situation actually happens is another question altogether. I don't know about you guys. Uh, I don't have a lot of mounted combat, especially mounted enemies in a lot of my games. Though... Mounted or goblins, you know, goblin cavalry, there we go, is a little bit more common. So, you know, that could be a thing, but this is a pretty high level feat, right? Yeah, level 10, though you don't really deal with mounted goblin cavalry at this point. Yeah, I don't know. This one's very niche in situations, but depending on your game setting, you know, you might be in nightly games. This could be an absolutely perfect one for your games. So it's something that's very very earnestly should be taken into consideration based on how your campaign is and how it's going. Specialized Mount is the feat that allows you to pick a specialization for your mount, and not only that, but you can select this feat up to two additional times. Yeah, two additional times to a maximum of three times, each gaining a different specialization. I'm not going to go into the specializations here because this video is already going to be a little bit long in the tooth. So you can go ahead and go to Archive and Nethys and check out the specializations for the mounts. But this is a really good feat overall. And again, not too much to see here other than that. Wave the Flag is the last in the banner feat. It's an action where you wave the banner. And when you do so, and I guess, do you have to be holding the banner? It doesn't say so. It says you wave your banner, but again, it never says that you're holding a banner or anything like that as far as the prerequisites or requirements for the action. So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, that's going to be up between you and your GM, I suppose. Uh, I, I definitely don't think making a player hold a banner is worthwhile, but, you know, that's between you and them. Either way, what it does, and it has a really good effect, uh, as an action, and this action does have the flourish trait, 
remember that this does have the flare straight and it also requires that you have the night uh, you are a part of the knights of last wall i don't know if this is also a night vigilant feat no you do not need to be a knight vigilant to be in this one so you just have to be a member of the knights of last wall and you have access to cavalier's banner which obviously you must because you have a banner Anyway, what it does for an action, you reduce all your teammates' frightened condition by one. No check, no nothing. You just automatically reduce all their frightened conditions by one. That's really solid. Not only that, but when you do so, they can immediately make a saving throw against a mental effect that is currently affecting them. Now, I don't know if they actually use a reaction. Let's see. Nope, they just attempt a new check. That's really good. You can use if your ally is currently dominated or have the ability to break out of some kind of like mental illusion or anything like that you can wave your flag and it, it motivates them inspires them and they break out of it with sheer willpower absolutely amazing and if they do take the new check on a, on a saving throw then they become immune to the effects of wave the banner wave the banner right wave the flag for 10 minutes that's something that is important i keep saying that it's but it is important it's important to remember as well that you do be it is a flourish so you can't use this in a round with another flourish and once you use the extra save on a mental effect you can't do so again for 10 minutes this is really solid end game i keep telling everyone end game fear effects become very very common it's part of the balancing factor of the game and makes some enemies much more terrifying you're dealing with dragons you're dealing with liches all that kind of stuff that give you the frightened condition this is a very powerful effect overall and honestly i would say worth picking up if you are going down the banner line obviously legendary rider one of the very rare level 20 archetype feats not many archetypes go all the way up to level 20 cavalier is one of those ones that could be a whole subclass for your character depending on how you play the game and it's you know it definitely shows this feat here is really solid you become permanently quickened and you can use that quicken action to command an animal which means you essentially can command your animal companion every round as a free action well, a quickened action. It's not technically free, but in the grand scheme of things, it's like a free action. That's super powerful. Essentially, what this means is you get five actions around. Two of them, sure, are from your animal companion, but your animal companion is a level 20 animal companion that's probably a specialized nimble or savage animal companion, which would mess some people up. This is very powerful. And again... Cavalier is very unique in so many ways. The way it deals with organizations, the fact that it has a level 20 archetype feat. The Cavalier is a very good subclass or class option for you if you're very interested in doing a mounted character run. You have all kinds of really great feats. Any feats you don't like, you can obviously put in your own class feats if you're doing standard. Or if you're using the bonus archetype feat rule, which a lot of people tables do and i mean mine included i highly recommend it this is just something that completely augments your character the cavalier all these things are so good are class worthy even and then you have your class on top of this this is such a good archetype it's very solid overall and even though it focuses on mounted combat which is not always viable i will say when you have the option to do mounted combat you're going to be a menace on the battlefield and very powerful for it. But yeah, that's going to be it. This video didn't take as long as I thought it was going to. And I hope that, hopefully with editing and everything, everything makes sense. There's some things that are kind of hard to explain in like video format like this without going into super, super detail. But I hope you all got the gist. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below. And as well... Thank you all so much for watching. I've been, we've been getting so much goodwill on the channel. So many people have been discovering the channel lately. Our channel is going to be growing super fast. By the time we just hit 1.1k subs when I am doing this video, like pretty much like a couple hours ago, we just hit 1.1k. By the time this one comes out, we might be at 1.2k or more. So 
Thank you all so much for the support and everyone who's joining in on the foundations of what's hopefully going to be a pretty big YouTube channel, at least in the tabletop sphere. That's my goal anyway, and that's really what I want to do with the channel. So I appreciate all the support we've been given up until this point, and I really hope you live up to it. But I'm not going to keep you all here too long. Thank you all so much for watching. Good luck with your games. Leave the bad luck to me, and I'll see you all next time. Bye.